okay, here's the plan, guys. My sister is getting married tomorrow, and I'm going to be attending the wedding. And uh, obviously, congratulations goes out to my sister. It's a very happy occasion for my family, and I'm really excited to, uh, to be a part of the whole thing tomorrow. It's going to be a blast. Um, but I have the day off from work today, which gives me time to make some videos. If everything goes according to plan, you will have three videos for me today. And that'll probably be the last you hear of me for the remainder of the month of October. So, um, so yeah, big weekend, obviously, and I'm going to be very busy. But with the day off today, I think I can knock out a few videos. Uh, that would include this particular video, which will be a preview and predictions video of WWE Hell in a Cell, the next Raw pay-per-view. Uh, there will also be my classic match review of an Undertaker gimmick match uh, that you all voted on on Twitter. Thank you very much for participating in that poll. Um, and my next Star Wars review. So, again, if everything goes according to plan, you'll have all three of those videos today. And, um, and then you won't see me for the next few days. So... <laughs> <laughs> uh, again, fingers crossed, here's hoping everything goes according to plan. I don't get any technical difficulties or interruptions or anything like that. Um, but yeah, let's jump right into Hell in a Cell. Uh, like I said, it's the next Raw pay-per-view. And my major problem with this show, right off the bat, and if you've watched my channel for any extended period of time, you know exactly what I'm going to say. Why the fuck are there three Hell in a Cell matches? I mean... Again, I, my, the way my brain works, it's always story first. Story should come first. And you can't just slap Hell in a Cell on something and expect me to care. You can't force me to care just by throwing a gimmick on there. Any more than making something a ladder... Again, the example I keep going back to is Shelton Benjamin versus Christian from... I think it was the first TLC pay-per-view. I, I asked all these questions like, why is this a ladder match? What's the feud? What's the story? I have no idea. They're just throwing these two guys that are very good at having ladder matches into a ladder match just because. But there's no reason for it. There's no, uh, you know, the ladder isn't being used to elevate the story, pun intended. Um, it's just slapped on to try, as a cheap excuse to try and raise the buy rates or generate some kind of interest. And that's what they're doing here with Hell in a Cell. It's what TNA did with Lockdown, um, the prime example of that. And I, I don't mind having pay-per-view centered around a gimmick match. I mean, obviously that's what the Royal Rumble is, but the Royal Rumble is, A, it's treated as an annual event, and B, um, it's treated with some level of importance to where it matters. So I'm not, uh, you know, I, I don't have a problem with that. War Games, same thing. It was an annual event, but they would build the story of the pay-per-view around that one special match, the War Games. So, okay, I'm fine with that. But... They're clearly just shoehorning matches into Hell in a Cell matches just because. And because they think that'll make their pay-per-view seem cooler, which, honestly, I, most of these matches, I would... I mean, I still wouldn't care whether they were in the cell or not, so it doesn't really matter. Um, except for one, but I'll cover that uh, in a bit. But it's... Man, I, I also feel bad for whichever one has to go on last because that match is going to have to follow two other Hell in a Cell matches, and that's kind of problematic. And again, using TLC as an example, I felt like Dean and Bray had, a, had that issue at one of the TLC pay-per-views where they had to close with a TLC match on a show that had chair shots and ladder bumps and table bumps. So by the time you get to it with Dean and Bray, it doesn't matter, and it has no impact, and it's not special. So... It's, um, uh, yeah, I, I mean, that's the problem when you do the same type of gimmick match more than once on the same card. It's just, it's just cheap, and it's, it creates too many problems. And they already had a Hell in a Cell match this year at WrestleMania. Granted, it wasn't that good outside of Shane being a, a crazy son of a bitch, but don't you want Hell in a Cell to be treated as, like, something special? I mean, that is one of your premier gimmick matches. That is one of your main highlights, and to me, just slapping it onto a bunch of matches that don't mean anything um, just to sell a pay-per-view, I mean, that doesn't do it for me. And I, again, it's something I've been complaining about for years. This is nothing new, uh, but I, this is just the latest incarnation of my rant about my problems with modern-day professional wrestling. Uh, with that, let's get into the card. Uh, we'll cover the Hell in a Cell matches last. Um... The undercard, uh, I'm trying to remember what's on it, to be perfectly honest. I know there's a Cruiserweight pre-show match. I think it's Cedric Alexander, um, Lince Dorado, 
uh, Sin Cara, and they're taking on Tony Nese, Drew Gulak, and Arya Divari. Uh, I guess now is a good time to talk about the Cruiserweight division on Raw and how bad it is. <laughs> it's just... It, they did... Um, they did what I feared they were going to do, because uh, they kind of did it with the Divas Revolution when they started that early on. It's like, oh, we brought up Becky, we brought up Charlotte, we brought up Sasha. Aren't we great? The women, the divas, they're awesome. And then they proceeded to have the same tag matches, only they would... They they formed three factions, and then we just got this endless series of tag matches where the cog... Uh, the pieces... The cogs in the machine were interchangeable, so it didn't really matter who was wrestling who, and there was no direction uh, initially. And the first month and a half, two months uh, of the Divas Revolution was just monotonous bullshit because it was just the same fucking matches over and over again. You're seeing that here with the Cruiserweight division. I feel like every week on Raw you get a Cruiserweight match, and it's the same fucking match regardless of who's in it or who's wrestling who or whether it's a tag match or a singles match. You're getting spots... But you're not getting character or direction. I mean, I, I, I'd be hard-pressed to tell you who's actually won most of these matches. Because I was like, I honestly, because they don't matter. It's like, all right, if Cedric Alexander wins one week, he's going to lose the next or whatever. It, it, like, he's not moving up or anything, so it doesn't really matter. Um, even uh, Brian Kendrick this week, he wrestled Rich Swan. Um, and Rich Swan beat him, and Brian Kendrick is the number one contender heading into a pay-per-view title match. And I'm like, oh, that's great. The number one contender gets jobbed out right before the pay-per-view. That makes sense. Um, that's, that's a good way to sell that title match yourself. You just told me the number one contender for the title is a loser, and you expect me to give a shit about the match. It's just, it, ah, that type of booking just drives me crazy. But, um... But yeah, that's the problem with the Cruiserweight division right now. And again, go back to WCW and look at the things that they did. Look at Jericho Malenko. Look at Eddie and Ray. Whenever they tried to build a story, even like bare bones stuff, like Dean Malenko just being a guy that could have great matches with everybody. I, like even when it was like at that level, like very basic level, Drew, or um, not Drew, um, Dean was somebody that was viewed as like he had a style and an ability that made him somewhat unbeatable in the cruiserweight division and he was like he was tough to beat and that was uh, it was something go back and look at the cruiserweight classic that wwe just did a couple months ago um it's yeah it's the same ta most of these same talents going out there and having flip floppy matches but they're doing it in matches that they're doing it in matches that matter they make you care about the people involved they uh they did these interviews with the guys so you get a sense of who they are and where they're coming from and you picked your favorites and you rooted for guys i hated akira tozawa entirely because he beat jack gallagher because i love jack gallagher by the way where the fuck is jack gallagher he was supposed to be brought up for this thing i i don't know it's um yeah it's i i they're not letting personality shine through the closest thing we've gotten to personality shining through um, is Rich Swan being a dancing happy guy, which is what they do with a lot of their black characters. I'm, I'm sorry. That's just, they, they like to pigeonhole their African American talent and it's like, okay, Rich Swan can dance and he's happy. It's like, all right. I mean, he's got charisma to him. I'm not putting Rich Swan down. I'm just saying they're not doing anything with him that, that, that's that interesting. Um, and then you, uh, the only thing they've done really, uh, is with Brian Kendrick turning heel and being desperate that he wants to have a career resurgence and that's why he wants the title. That's really the only thing they've done. Uh, other than that, I, I, I don't care. Like, and the Cruiserweight division has been, um, it's been pure filler on Raw every week since it started. And that's not, they don't seem to be building a foundation. They don't seem to have much of a direction. It's just, let's have guys go out there and do flip-flop matches. And that's, that just doesn't do it for me. Um, Again, and I would be saying this again if it were the women doing this, as if it were if it were the heavyweights doing this. It was just it's just mindless matches, just for the sake of having mindless matches, and that's that's not interesting. That's not intriguing. It's not engaging at all. But anyway, uh, so who wins the pre-show tag match? Don't care because it won't matter. Um, and then we go into the main card. We have got Bailey versus Dana Brooke, which is an okay feud. I like that Dana has actually had the advantage over Bailey. Uh, they're letting a heel actually build heat, so presumably Bailey's going to win at the pay-per-view. Again, I'm, I'm assuming. Um, match could be okay. Uh, whatever. It's it's just there. 
Um, you got Enzo and Cass versus the club. That should be fun. Um, uh, I legitimately don't know who's going to go over. That's a good one because it's like you either want the club to build up their heat or you want Enzo and Cass to um, gain some momentum because I got to think that Enzo and Cass versus New Day is something that they're building to. Um, you know, the big baby face tag match, which I'd be fine with, uh, to be perfectly honest. Uh, so with that, we have the tag title match. It'll be Sheamus and Cesaro taking on the New Day. I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if Sheamus and Cesaro won, but I'm leaning towards New Day winning because, again, I think we're going to get Enzo and Cass versus New Day down the road. And, um, uh, Cesaro, and as New Day inches closer to Demolition's record, um, I think that would be a bigger match for Enzo and Cass to have. Is like they could be the ones to potentially uh, derail the New Day before they break Demolition's record. But it's, um, but yeah, I like I said, I wouldn't be surprised if Cesaro and Sheamus won. But I think that they're gonna they're gonna have a falling out, and they're eventually gonna revisit that feud, and we're gonna finally get like a payoff to it and like a resolution to the the best of seven series. So once again, we shall see. Uh, match should be fine. Um, God, is that it? Am I, oh, there's that. I've already talked about it. The Cruiserweight title match. Uh, TJ Perkins defending against Brian Kendrick. I would put it on Brian Kendrick at this point because he's far and away the most interesting character in the Cruiserweight division. Something I never thought I would ever say about Brian Kendrick, but... Because, uh, uh, like I said, Kendrick was never one of my... He was a huge internet favorite uh, back in, like, 03, 04, and pretty much ever since. But he was never one of my favorites, and I never saw what the big deal was, but... Fuck, he's the best thing in the Cruiserweight division right now. Um, so, yeah, put the strap on him, absolutely. And he did beautifully in the Cruiserweight Classic, I thought. Um, Daniel Bryan on commentary certainly helped out with that. But, um, yeah, they really sold his story really well in the CWC. And at least he's had some level of character development, uh, whereas um, most of the Cruiserweights on Raw don't have characters. They just, they're just they just there to do flip-flops, and that's it. Um, so yeah, I would put the belt on Kendrick and then see if you can build the division around him and, uh, try and get something going on that front because right now it's just, it's just pure filler. Um, so with that, let's jump into the Hell in a Cell matches. We have three of them because sure, <laughs> um, let's get the worst one out of the way. Roman Reigns versus Rusev. Good God almighty. Why is this feud still going? I don't. Look, I didn't care before. I didn't care when the feud started. I didn't care when they had their first match. I didn't care when they had their second match. I didn't care when they had the match that ended that never officially started. I just don't care. I do not care about this feud at all. Um, it's Rusev, Rusev and Lana once again, an act that got really hot, had no business working as well as it did, but they they managed to make it work somehow. Uh, got over great. Rusev developed quite nicely as a talent. Then he got fed to the John Cena machine. Then he got stuck into a stupid feud with Dolph Ziggler. Then he got stuck into the League of Nations, which was a horrible stable that didn't do anybody any favors. And now he's stuck in another stupid storyline with Roman Reigns that doesn't make any sense. It's boring, repetitive. Uh, makes Roman look like a, a complete fucking jerk. So if they're trying to make him a babyface, they failed. Uh, like He just looks like an asshole in the whole thing. And I, I, I really don't give a fuck who wins. Um, I, I mean, my preference would be Rusev, but he's damaged goods at this point, so who cares? I just want the feud to be over. It's Again, using another Rusev example, it's like when we got to that point with the uh, I, I, the last Cena Rusev match. I don't remember which one it was. If it was the I Quit match or uh, the Last Man Standing match. Did they have a Last Man Standing match? I don't know. They wrestled each other so many fucking times, I lost track, but... Um, by the time they got to the fourth pay-per-view encounter, I was like, I, look, can we just have Cena go over and get it over with and end this fucking feud? He's, I was like, fucking hell, do we need to do this four months in a row? Christ. It, it's just monotonous, boring, annoying. And Hell in a Cell does absolutely nothing to raise any kind of intrigue or, um, interest in this match for me personally. Uh, you know, I mean, theoretically, they could go out there and have a solid match, but... They're fighting from, I mean, they're, they're fighting an uphill battle because who gives a shit? I, I mean, nobody cares. Like, And if you do, if I'm wrong and you do care, please explain why. Because I can't imagine, like, the, the conclusion to this story is really that intriguing and something worth checking this pay-per-view out to, to see a conclusion to. It's just, um, 
I don't know. I've already given this match way more attention than it deserves. Uh, my hope is that this match closes the pay-per-view so I know when to turn it off. <laughs> you know, I'll get through uh, um, Owens, and, uh, Owens and Rollins, and I'll get through Charlotte and Sasha, and then they close with Roman and Rusev, and then I can just turn the pay-per-view off. It'll be fine. It'll work beautifully that way. But, um, yeah, that's just me being a dick. But... Uh, yeah, this has no business being a Hell in a Cell match. Uh, it has no business being on this card. Both guys should have moved on to different things by this point. I just, I'm, I'm just done with this. I am so done with this. So, okay, that's the first Hell in a Cell match. That shouldn't be a Hell in a Cell match. Um, next up is one that seems to be the main focal point of the Hell in a Cell gimmick. Uh, and that is, uh, Charlotte defending, or no, I'm Sasha Banks defending the women's title against, uh, Charlotte in a Hell in a Cell match. The first ever women's Hell in a Cell match. I think that's cool. Um, I think Charlotte and Sasha was getting to that point where it's like, okay, I feel like I've seen this match two dozen times. So we need to start thinking about wrapping this up. And I think Hell in a Cell, it's like, all right, you raise the stakes. Hopefully this is the last time we see it for a while. Um, I'm still not liking Sasha as a character on Raw. Um, and I've talked about it on Twitter. I miss mean and nasty Sasha. I like the Sasha that was... For lack of a better word, she was kind of a bitch. I, I, like, that's the Sasha that everybody fell in love with in NXT, and that's the one that um, got the reputation for being awesome. Not this underdog, fight for respect, you know. I, I Really, she's she's acting like, she's acting more like Bailey right now than she is Sasha Banks. Uh, she's Bailey without the fun, and that's kind of boring. And it's like, no, I, I want you to be nasty. I want you, uh, so... Yeah, I, I want you to be the mean, nasty. And again, uh, look at Charlotte and Sasha's feud in NXT. Um, Charlotte was a heel, but then basically got turned babyface because she was going up against Sasha, who was this mean, nasty, um, little, you know, conceited little bitch, and who was just, uh, you know, just volatile and angry at anybody that crossed her. It's like, that's the Sasha that I like. And that's not what we're getting on Raw right now. Like I said, we're getting a raw, raw underdog babyface who's fighting for respect, which is kind of boring. Um, Charlotte, I think, does well. Um, you know, her mic skills aren't perfect, but I think she does well enough. And uh, I think she's been a really good centerpiece for the division. And I think giving them a Hell in a Cell match is fine. I'm completely fine with that. Um, if it were up to me, this would have been the only Hell in a Cell match on the card. Uh, I would not have thrown Owens and Rollins into this spot, and I would not have thrown... I, I definitely... Dude, fuck it. If I were booking, Rusev and Roman would have been done by now. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I think it would be more beneficial to them if they were the only Hell in a Cell match on the card. And, uh, I don't know what it's the most intriguing of the three matches by far because i'm already sitting here thinking it's like what the fuck are the women gonna do in there like are they actually gonna do something really really crazy i don't know uh we'll we'll find out come pay-per-view time but i uh i'm sorry girls uh and there's talk that they might get the closing spot um again that's not in this situation that's not an enviable spot because they've got to follow two other hell in a cell matches so there's really like I mean, nobody's going to come off well with that closing spot, I don't think. But it it is what it is. Again, I say just give the closing spot to Roman and Rusev, and then we just turn the pay-per-view off after the second Hell in a Cell. <laughs> Best case scenario. But, uh, yeah, who wins? Um, I guess we'll go... I, I guess Charlotte. Uh, I think Charlotte will probably take the win. Uh, well, I don't know. They may... They might... Because I think they want to do uh, Bailey versus Sasha at some point. But I, I don't know if now is the time to start setting it up. I don't know. Uh, so I guess I can see it going either way. But for right now, I'll pick Charlotte. And with that, let's go into the final Hell in a Cell match. Kevin Owens defending the Universal title against Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins is not working as a babyface. Uh, it, it, happen, it happens to many guys um, uh, under the WWE machine. Seth Rollins as a babyface is not a bad idea. Seth Rollins as a babyface in the WWE system is a horrible idea because they're going to mismanage him and they're going to make him they're going to make him a doofus babyface and that's exactly what they've done. And he's boring, he's bland. Uh, the fans were conditioned to boo him for so long that the the face turn didn't feel organic. Uh, there's just he, it's just not working. He's just not working as a face. Um, he's better as a heel anyway, but 
It's just uh, it's just not working. And then Kevin Owens, uh, the poor sap that's carrying that belt, uh, is made to look like a chump most of the time. I mean, look at this week's edition of Raw. The whole show's centered around looking for the list of Jericho and, uh, you know, I watched, uh, they did the triple threat match and Seth pinned both Jericho and Owens at once. It's like, wow, they look like jokes right now. But it's just, uh, it, it's hard to care. And again, that's not saying that both guys are untalented. I, far from it. I, I think both guys are extremely talented. It's just, they're just in a bad situation right now. And I don't know if this match is going to work, but uh, I'm sure they'll do something crazy to try and make you forget that the build-up to this has been kind of shitty. I mean, the only good thing they've done in the build-up uh, were how it started with Triple H screwing uh, Seth Rollins over and siding with Owens to set him up as the champion. And what happened on Raw where uh, Owens did the the powerbomb on the apron to Rollins and now it's like you've got all these questions like, oh my god, is Rollins even going to be okay to make it to Hell in a Cell? Like, what's going on? Because that move put Sami Zayn out for so long and Yada yada yada, whatever. So hopefully that plays a component in that that plays a part in the story of the match because that's you know Seth took a move that put Sami Zayn on the shelf for a while, and I think it you know he should be going into this match at uh, you know in, in an injured state. And actually, because I think Kevin's is go uh, Kevin Owens is going to retain the title. Um, I think he this is going to be Seth Rollins out. Is that he went into this match injured now? If they do the match and Seth is in there and he just starts doing flippy flops and uh, not selling it at all, that's going to make the entire segment on Raw completely pointless. But um, again, I I'm sure they'll try and do the best they can to make the match work as well as possible, but there's just uh, bad booking, unfortunately, got, got in the way. Which kind of sums up this whole pay-per-view. But uh, So yeah, in case you couldn't tell, I am not excited for this pay-per-view much at all. Um, it is what it is. It's... I don't know. Um, SmackDown is typically the better show of the two. And a lot of it is because they just get the most out of the least. And they, this, I mean, they, again, I'll say it again. They got royally screwed in the draft. When you look at what Raw ended up getting, you look at what SmackDown got instead, it's like, man, they got hosed like crazy. But typically they put on the better show, and it's because they at least try to make stuff matter, and they at least try to... Uh, provide proper context to things and make things uh, feel a little bit more important than, you know, just uh, going out there and trying to be entertaining like Raw does. And it's funny, their whole goal is to be entertaining and they fail. It's... <laughs> sure. Okay. But anyway, uh, that's my preview of Hell in a Cell. I'll probably have a review up sometime next week. Uh, not on the night of the pay-per-view and not on Monday because Monday's Halloween. And I'm not even going to be watching Raw on Monday. I'm going to be watching... Halloween and Ghostbusters and handing out candy to kids in costumes. And if anybody asks me which versions of Halloween and Ghostbusters I will be watching, kindly go fuck yourself. You know damn well which version I'm watching. Uh, the real ones, the original ones. But uh, anyway, uh, like I said, uh, I've got two more videos coming out today. So hopefully, again, hopefully everything goes well and nothing gets in the way. But uh, yeah, like I said, Hell in a Cell review will be coming out next week. So stay tuned.